Welcome back to another weekly bite of MMORPG news. This has been an interesting few weeks. We got MMO delays, MMOs that are no longer being developed as MMOs, MMOs shutting down. Typically, we have plenty of positive news to cover, but today is, uh, is quite the opposite. So I hope that you are emotionally prepared for all of this. Although before we jump into this week's weekly bite of MMORPG news, I do want to note that I am going to be streaming the new Unreal Engine 4 overhaul of Blade and Soul over on Twitch at approximately 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time today. If you're interested in what the new class is like, if you're interested in what the new Unreal Engine 4 update did to the game, I urge you to come on over and join me. I will be streaming for several hours and this will not be the only time that I will be streaming Blade and Soul. So make sure to follow us to get updates when we go live in the future. Also remember to subscribe if you haven't already to remain updated with all of the latest MMO news. Other than that, let's jump right in. Let's go ahead and start this off with Lost Ark. Why? Because plenty of people are upset that Amazon recently revealed that they were delaying the release of the game into 2022. Many gamers are speculating that this is due to not wanting to compete with their in-house developed MMO New World, and that is very likely a main part of the issue. Why release two different MMOs within a month or two of one another? It makes no logical sense, especially given how successful and anticipated Lost Ark is. The official Steam page lists the release date of Lost Ark as March 31st, 2022, but that is merely a placeholder date. I'm well aware that some people, for whatever reason, seem to think that that is the new confirmed date, but it isn't. Amazon have stated that the game will be launching within the first quarter of 2022, meaning that any time between January through March. It's a shame to see the game suffer yet another round of delays, but when you look at the number of delays New World has suffered, it's really no surprise. Now, I just did a video on Ica a couple days ago. I made the claim that I doubted many of you had ever played the game, but Apparently I was wrong. Quite a few of you replied stating that not only had you in fact played the MMO at one point, but that you had enjoyed various aspects of it. Which is unfortunate, as next week the title will be shutting down entirely. If you want to relive the glory days one last time before you never have the option to ever again, this is your last chance. Hata Studio, the team behind the upcoming Tower of Fantasy MMO, revealed four brand new trailers at China Joy 2021. These trailers showcase various features, including new combat, group content, new areas, and honestly, there was an entire trailer dedicated to some pretty sick looking cosplayers. I have a dedicated video on all four of the trailers if you're interested in what they're doing with the game and the progress that has been made thus far. Leading up to the release of Bless Unleashed, fans of the game were claiming that Bless would be the next big MMO. And you know what? In its first week, the game went on to top over 70,000 concurrent active players logged in at any given moment. The second week achieved equally as impressive numbers, but as of week three, concurrent player numbers have more than halved down to 35,000, with Bless losing thousands of active players per day. Now I did a dedicated video on Bless a few weeks ago after having dedicated more than 20 hours in it, and honestly it wasn't nearly as bad as I, along with other people, were anticipating it to be. However, upon reaching endgame, many players have begun to realize that much like the console version, there just isn't nearly enough to do to really warrant a long-term investment. Granted, the devs behind Bless have confirmed that they are working on balancing classes and new content, but as PSO2 New Genesis has shown us, slow update cycles can kill a free game regardless of how good it is. Now, Bless Unleashed is in no way dead, but having potentially lost half of its player base in its first month is definitely concerning. It does not matter how much you want to defend this game, there is no arguing with the statistics. 
Pearl Abyss released a brand new trailer for Dokavi after being radio silent for probably over a year after the announcement of the title. The trailer felt like a wild acid trip with a K-pop soundtrack, bright, vibrant colors, and uh, well, a whole lot of fast cuts, explosions, and some of the most bizarre gameplay that I have ever seen out of an MMO. Well what would have been an MMO anyway, as Pearl Abyss have confirmed that while Dokavi was announced as an MMO, it is no longer planned to be one. Instead, this is going to be an RPG. It's unconfirmed whether there will be multiplayer functionality, and if there is, in what form that will take. Regardless, despite how crazy the trailer ultimately ended up being, I will admit, I did have fun watching and listening to it. I'm writing this up Friday evening, literally less than 24 hours before posting it. But earlier today, Kakao, the team publishing the brand new Alion MMO, announced that Alion is in fact going to be free to play. Yeah, initially, Alion, which went under the Ascent Infinite Realm moniker, was going to be a free to play MMO. Then, after converting to Alion, they revealed that it would be a premium purchase. Now, after opening pre purchases for the game, they've changed their minds once again and are going the free to play route. And it is no surprise as to why, really. As I stated in my video covering this yesterday, players are slowly catching on to Korean MMO practices. Black Desert was a premium title, so was Blast, so was Astelia. Each game sold less than the last, and Elyon is absolutely no different. Due to this, Kakao likely knows that they have to make a return on their investment, and a free business model is the only way that they can realistically achieve that. Elyon was also delayed back to October 20th as well, as to not have to compete with the release of New World. If you thought the final Lineage MMORPG would be something innovative, something that invites new features, new mechanics to the game, to the genre, then you're probably going to be very, very disappointed with this news. NCSoft's founder revealed recently that Lineage W, which actually stands for Lineage Worldwide, has been in active development for the last four years. This title has been developed with the mentality of developing the last Lineage game, even going as far as to claim that this is the accumulation of 24 years of hard work spent on the Lineage series. This is the quote unquote definitive edition of the entire Lineage franchise. This is everything that they have ever wanted the game to be. And you know what? It turns out everything they wanted the game to be was a low budget cross platform MMO for mobile and PC that is only playable on PC via their purple platform, meaning that it isn't even built for PC play in mind. You're required to utilize their purple emulator, which leaves things no different to any other low budget mobile game. And players could not be any more disappointed than they already are. Blade and Souls Unreal Engine 4 update is here. It brings with it the brand new Dual Blade class, an entire overhaul of the graphical engine as we're no longer forced to play the game in Unreal Engine 3. And honestly, where many players thought that this would potentially revitalize the game, it hasn't had much of an effect at all on the active player base, at least in North America and Europe. I plan on pushing through the new overhauled version of the game, as I am going to be streaming this over the next couple weeks to give a deeper impression of whether the overhaul is worth reinvesting time into. From the reception though, it wouldn't seem as though this was nearly enough to convert non-players into active players. Bandai Namco have a huge hit on their hands right now with Tales of Arise, and people are excited for the new Elden Ring title. And while we're playing through Tales of Arise right now, my eyes still remain firmly fixated on Blue Protocol, because, you know, it's an MMO, and MMOs are games you dedicate days, weeks, months, or even years to, while single player games are incredible experiences, MMOs just provide a, a larger, more long-term investment. And Bamco went on a character reveal spree recently, showcasing a variety of different characters that will be a large focus of the game's narrative. While there wasn't necessarily any information revealed concerning a release date, they did go on to state that they are still hiring for a localization director as well, in the hopes of localizing the game into English-speaking languages, which Bodes well for us, considering the language that I'm speaking right now. 
I mentioned earlier that Ica was shutting down. Unfortunately, the same applies to another unique MMO, Granado Espada. Although, in this instance, it's a little different. Granado Espada has two different publishers over here in the West. T3 Fun, the publisher behind Granado Espada and Ica, are shutting down both games due to a lack of interest. So, while this version of the game will no longer be playable, there will still be one that is. Unfortunately, to play on the other server, you will need to begin from scratch, which is something that I'm sure many of the remaining players will refuse to do. If there were any really left at all. This is a crying shame as Granado Espada is one of the few rare unique MMOs out there. I have every intention of covering this game in the near future in an attempt to showcase entirely how unique it is before both versions of the game are shut down. And that's it, that is every bit of MMO related news that mattered to me over the last couple weeks. Sure, there's probably more out there, but it's not significant enough for me to really dedicate time to. This is what is important, but but if you think that there was something that I missed, please go ahead and let me know via any platform that I'm available on, Discord, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or even in the comment section below. Someday soon, I'm gonna make it.